Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be renovating this bathroom for under $500. So yes, you heard that right. We are renovating a bathroom on a budget. And let me tell you, it can be done. I mean, look at how old this bathroom is. <laughs> it's literally not been updated since the 70s when it was built, except for, you know, a new layer of paint on the wall. So as you can tell, this bathroom is in desperate need of some help. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to clean all of the surfaces, scrub any of the grout lines or right around the sink and any of the spots that could potentially lift once we paint everything and just get it ready for renovation. You told me to lighten up, but it's not easy breaking habits. I've got a ton of bad... So this nifty little gadget that I am using here, I saw Lynn White using this in one of her videos to clean her shower, and thanks so much, Lynn White. This was such a great recommendation. I cannot recommend this tool more. It is a Rubbermaid scrubbing thingy. <laughs> I found it at Target, and I will link it down below, but oh my goodness, it has changed the bathroom cleaning game, let me tell you. I'm sure that you can use it in many locations in your house, but I found it to be most helpful and scrubbing all of those hard to reach areas. And I'll show you in just a minute, scrubbing the bathtub in the tracks of where a glass door used to live. It, we no longer have one obviously, but oh my goodness, it cleaned so well. So not sponsored, but highly recommend. Go out to Target and pick you one up today because you will thank me later, promise. I asked you to stay a while, but it's not easy making promises. You've got a habit of moving on And so you'd rather be anonymous You said it's not as bad as all that Just need to take a deep breath and relax We've got plenty of time tonight Oh, everything's gonna be, gonna be So I did Here is those tracks that I was talking about, and this is the Method Foaming Tub and Tile Cleaner, or Foaming Bathroom Cleaner, I, I don't remember which, but I get all of my Method and Mrs. Meyers products from Grove Collaborative. Again, not sponsored, but you know, highly recommend. And the smell of this product, just, it smells so good. But like, look at this thing go. It gets in those little cracks so perfectly, and it was perfect for the job. apologize for <clears throat> the echoing but here's the progress on the bathroom zooming out a little bit these are where the towel rack was they were ceramic and they were basically just glued to the wall so there was no way to get them off without having to cut the walls so what I have found is that to get these off you cut around the here let me show you Ooh, one of these pieces like they broke so you cut around it with a, don't know the technical term, I'll show you the tool that we used here in just a moment. But you cut around the sheetrock and then have to effectively replace the sheetrock. This was the saw. Josh did this for me while I was at work. He also finished sanding the other part of the bathroom, which I'll show you in just a second. So that is gonna be tonight's project is cleaning up all of this. <laughs> and then all of the dust wiping down the walls and getting all of this nice and cleaned up. So yeah, we're gonna get to that. And then I'm also gonna be removing all of the caulking from around the sink, cause I'm gonna start painting probably tonight, honestly, if not tomorrow after work. So I realized when editing this back that I just kind of jumped right into like major renovation things like cutting holes in walls, you know? <laughs> But for whatever reason, um, I forgot to tell Josh that I wanted to film majority of the big stuff, like cutting into the walls, but he was really nice and he got that done for me while I was at work that day. And when I got home, I was feeling motivated. So I went ahead and I cleaned up all of this mess from all of the sanding 
As you can see, that wall right there um, that my broom is right next to, it is really bumpy and definitely needed to be sanded down. We did sand down all of the walls because there's several layers of paint on these walls and there was drips and unevenness. And you can tell like really bad once the wall is painted gray that there's a seam around the center of the room where the sheetrock meets. And I don't know if that was the people who had originally hung the sheetrock or from over time it's just kind of swelled because maybe it's not the right sheetrock i have no clue but this is not going to be the most perfect renovation it just looks good for what it used to be you know what i mean so just take it with a grain of salt anyway so i am wiping down the wall with a microfiber cloth to get all of the dust off of it because i am going to start painting next and oh my goodness, let me tell you what a transformation that was after the paint got on the walls. It opened this room up. It made it feel so much more, I don't know, airy, light, fresh, all of the adjectives. And I fell in love with it immensely. And let me tell you, it made the biggest change. So thankfully Josh held off for me on putting the sheetrock into the wall to fix these holes up so that I could actually capture it on camera for you guys. So what we did was we cut holes into the walls and then we cut sheetrock to fit the holes to go ahead and replace it because that's really the only way that you can replace ceramic fixtures. So here we're just taping off with the sheetrock tape, I don't know technical terms, sorry guys. <laughs> but uh, this effectively feels, fills the seams and then he's going to apply the pink mud. I'll insert a picture here of the mud that we used, but it's the one that goes on pink and then turns white when it's dry. So once it was dried, he sanded it down. I highly recommend using a sanding screen instead of sandpaper because the sand screen doesn't allow, or it doesn't gum up with all of the powder from it, so. Here we are getting started with painting. Let me tell you really quickly that I made several mistakes starting off painting, trying to do things in a new way, in an innovative way, and just use a paintbrush, use a roller, don't use all this extra fancy crap because it just doesn't work. <laughs> Let me make that mistake for you. It just does, it's not worth it, it just doesn't work. And maybe I was using the tools wrong, but just take it from me, it doesn't work. Paintbrush, roller, keep it simple.
this product. It's actually pretty good at edging. Like if you can see, there's the old color and then the door, which I'm gonna be repainting this. So the door frame, I mean. The edging is actually going pretty good. You can kind of see the paint strokes in it, so I don't really like that too much. I think on the second coat that I do, I'm just gonna use a roller because I don't really like the paint strokes that I am seeing. Also, learning curve with this one, it drips like off the bottom of it. So I don't know if I'm using too much paint on my brush, but you know, whatever. We're just gonna keep going with it, but I really like the color. It's gonna definitely lighten it up in here a lot. So while I thought this edging tool would be a great idea to go ahead and get all of these edges nice and clean around the sink, it actually worked out pretty good. Just not as a finishing touch, you know what I mean? So, and then I also decided that it would be a good idea to paint the whole wall with an edging tool. And Josh looked at me like I was insane. And I guess I was because I went out, wound up going over it with a roller for the second coat anyways. So I don't know. I guess the edging tool is okay if you're doing like really smooth edges. This little corner paintbrush thingy, forget about it. It's not worth it. Don't even, don't even waste your time. But the edger, I guess, is okay for doing edges. Just like I said, make sure that you are aware that it drips. So don't load it or overload it. So I guess. <laughs> Oh, uh, and the color of the walls. So another YouTuber that I watch is Amanda Page from This Crazy Life. I absolutely love her Utah home. They did just move to Arizona. So they, I assume, are going to be renovating. And I hope that they put this color, the same color in their home because, oh my goodness, it is just, it's so light. It's so neutral. It's so airy. And the color that we have right here is Sherwin-Williams, a new gray, which was a comparable shade to their home, which was Benjamin Moore Revere Pewter. So both of those, I am in love with these colors and it's, it's my favorite color, obviously. <laughs> that were currently on this were recessed with the hinges in it. The ones that we have currently are, I don't know if you can tell, but they're not recessed. So we're gonna have to chisel this out a little bit more so that the new hinges will fit. So let's do that. So these doors were actually a huge hassle. Having the wooden doors being countersunk for the hinges was a huge deal. We had to chip out so much of this, I guess it's the door jam or the, the whatever you call the edge pieces around the door, the framing, the, yeah. So it took us like three days to get this to hang straight, to hang right, to hang square. I don't know if the door frame is not square or the door itself was not square. It was a hassle, let me tell you. So I actually did not get footage of us hanging the door specifically, but us having to chip out all of that was definitely necessary and now the door closes. So that's all that matters. <laughs> the next step that we're going to tackle are these countertops. And I started off by cleaning them really good and then I'm gonna go in with a, I think it was a 100 grit sander, sanding block to go ahead and buff up the surface so that all of the shiny was gone because we are going to go in and paint them next. Thank you. 
I want to say one of the most important parts about painting Formica is once after one after you sand you have got to wipe it down really good to get all of the dust off because it's going to make the difference of your paint chipping or your paint flaking and a good adhesion. I definitely recommend sanding any surface that you're going to spray paint or that really you're going to paint that has a slick surface to it originally. It's going to make a huge difference in how your paint adheres. So this is the paint that I'm actually using on this Formica countertop. It is an appliance epoxy by Krylon. And yes, it is meant for appliances, but let me tell you, this did a wonderful job and it gave it such a slick, smooth, it is a glossy appearance, but I kind of prefer that. And it's super easy to keep clean. You'll see here that there was a ton of spray back. So I added <laughs> a second layer of paper and a mask and a fan. So. It, there is a ton of paint in here and I highly recommend doing this in a very well ventilated area because oh boy this really stunk so bad so thankfully we have a window in here that I was able to open and get all of this paint out and yes the fan is now permanently painted from sucking all of the overspray out <laughs> so I think I did about three or four coats very thin coats and it turned out phenomenal I could not be happier with the results. So apparently the standard width in poles back in 1973 was a lot different than it is nowadays. So I did fill these, at least the bottom one, with wood putty and then waited for that to dry and then I drilled a new pilot hole for the second or the bottom part of this pole to be screwed into. And then I did have to fill both of the holes on the drawers because having one 
fit in one side and then drilling into the other, it was going to be off center. So I did fill both in and then I redrilled both holes on the drawers. So I am prepping these cabinets to paint my priming layer on and I don't think you can tell on camera but you can definitely see that there is a bit of a wood grain texture to them. That is because they have a textured formica front to them. I, I don't even know. You can't sand it so I thought that you know maybe a shellac covering would help it. It didn't work. I didn't film it. I didn't include it because I don't recommend that method so I whenever these cabinets start to chip bad enough that it drives me nuts and let me tell you i already got a few dings in them just reassembling the bathroom it <laughs> don't recommend that process for this type of material anyways so we're just keeping on going with it i've got the shellac on but like i said i don't recommend for this type of material i'm painting over it with a regular paint and i'll include all of the paint colors that i used um, in the description box below, but I am painting the cabinet fronts with this gray color, this darker gray color, and then I'm also going to be painting the doors.
Did you pack the flashlight, the blanket, and the man? It's a real adventure, the trail you're looking at. I'm glad you came for a while, I thought you might be bailing. Is that the same yellow shirt you used to wear? But a thousand years seem like almost no time now. This guitar right here, do you still remember how? I played for you, I was crappy, but you sang along and I thought you knew I could die to keep you near. We've got a bar in the tent, it's 5.30 Useless words What you said, what I said That might have made it worse We're here again At the same spot where we kissed The first time I swear my pain is far away Long gone by now We've got a fire in the tent It's 5.30 5.30 a.m. Let's be the kids who left Get in trouble again That star's got nothing on you That one's brand new Still it's got nothing on you Tonight We've got a fire in the tent It's 5.30 So my favorite yet least favorite part of finishing up this countertop was the caulking. Let me tell you, it makes it look so seamless and so beautiful, but boy, it is a mess. So caulking, great for looks, horrible at application. Faster, getting wilder, don't care if I get out of line. You feel that beat getting hotter.
Moving on to the doors, I went ahead and painted all of the grooves with a paintbrush and then I went back in and rolled all of the flat surfaces. This door was so porous, it drank up two coats of paint and honestly, I could have put on another two or three coats and it would still not look perfect. So I just, I left it at two and eventually I'll probably go back in and paint another two or three, but for now, two coats did the job. <laughs> that came with this kit are freaking garbage so this one fell in the wall this one's in and then a simple hanging roll of toilet paper started to pull this one out <laughs> so i am going up to lowe's today to get better wall anchors so that we can get this project done because we're like a month in and i'm over it <laughs> So I have to say these wall anchors made all the difference in these towel hangers and the toilet paper holder not budging. So I highly doubt they're going anywhere. really good and I did it all by myself very proud oh boy do I have some tips and tricks for you on installing snap and lock floors so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a brief overview of me laying the floors down um, but for painting the cabinets and the formica I'm going to include a separate video probably later on this week on the fine details about it and then same thing with the snap and lock floors and then also the same thing with the installation of new fixtures and getting rid of ceramic fixtures. So those are just going to be bonus videos. And like I said, I've got a lot of errors that I'd like to share with you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. And I will include those in separate videos. But for now, just enjoy the installation of the snap and lock floors, which looks so much better than that disgusting tile that is beneath them. Wake up at mine Same question always I'm getting tired We could have breakfast Got in your freckles Close to the west coast How about that? Why don't we just get a place together? Morning's in our own bed So much better Balconies and Want. Why don't we just get a place together? 
So a home reno project would not be complete without a quick little DIY. I got this wood from Lowe's and I cut it down to make a quick frame and I mitered the edges. I also stained it with the same stain that I topped my butcher block top on my cabinet with and I went ahead and assembled this around a Dollar Tree canvas. Next, I'm moving over to my Cricut and I am cutting out some vinyl to go ahead and put on six different canvases and now I am going to be weeding my projects. I'm so much better, balconies and bathtubs, what you want, why don't we just get Are y'all ready for this glow up? I cannot believe how well this bathroom turned out. I am so beyond proud of it because I did majority of the work myself. And let me tell you, this project cost under $500. And I don't know if you watch HGTV, but holy cow, those bathrooms, when you fully renovate, it can cost like eight to 10 to 12 to 15 grand, depending on how bougie you go with your fixtures and stuff like that. But I am so thrilled that I was able to get this done in under $500 by using affordable items and reusing a lot of stuff that I had around the house as far as decor goes and DIYing a lot of it too. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. I really hope that you enjoyed this bathroom transformation and I hope to see you back here soon for another cleaning video which will be coming your way next week. Bye y'all!